Was it coming from the service?
Second reading this morning, which of course is taken from the New Testament, <clears throat> is from the taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called in uncircumcision by those who were called with circumcision. 
A vessel of service has been made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at the same at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus. You who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, in his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the divine wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has established the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself a new humanity in place of the two. Thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross. Thus putting to death the hostility brought it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who are far off, and peace to those who are near. For through him both of us have access to one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens. But you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also are built together spiritually into a dry place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The apostles returned from their mission. They gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognised them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognised him and rushed about the whole region, and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe on his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father of Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of all substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate to our Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us of the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and the Catholic of Church. I acknowledge what baptism for the remission of sins, and that I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. 
name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So we're working our way through Mark's Gospel, and as I said last week, it's all about Jesus until we have that distracting interlude that's a bit disconcerting with the beheading of John the Baptist. And today we go back to the disciples and the return from their first missionary journey out in the countryside of Galilee. Now, as they come back, they'd reported to Jesus what had happened as they travelled around sharing the good news of God's kingdom. And they had an exhilarating but exhausting time, hadn't they? This was the first time they were on their own in that team, which must have been a bit apprehensive. But they've been preaching, casting out demons, anointing the sick, lots of other things. And as Jesus listened to what they'd been up to, he must have been really moved by their stories that they'd taken up that mantle and gone out doing those things. How they inspired people and how they'd witnessed to him. But I'm sure he also saw the fatigue on their faces and heard the weariness in their voices. And so in a gracious moment of concern, he said to them, come away, come away for a while and rest. I know a place that's close by, just across the lake, a deserted place. So off they head to seek some rest and refreshment. But if you prick up your ears, you can hear the crowds coming close. The splash of oars on the sea, the noise of sandals on the road, the crescendo of chatter, and any hopes of rest and relaxation are shattered. Like the disciples, we too sometimes need to talk, share our experiences, and then to withdraw from everything. So who do you talk to about the things that really matter? Do you talk often enough or deeply enough? Or do you prefer to let things bottle up inside? Well, the disciples taught Jesus, didn't they, about all that they'd done and taught. What about the pressures of work and family life and home? Your innermost hopes and fears, your joys and your frustrations of your Christian faith. And who do you listen to, really listen, talking about the things that matter to them the most? Do you really listen to your colleagues at work, your family at home, your friends, others at church? Because Jesus sets that example of listening to what the disciples had experienced. And how do you make time to withdraw, to listen to the depths of your own being? How do you step back from the immediacy of working life, family life, all the different demands that we have? to listen to what's really going on. Because if we're not careful, like the disciples, we can find ourselves in that same predicament of not taking time out. And that's not healthy. When Jesus longed for peace and quiet, the whole region brought out their sick to be healed. Well, many is the time when I've come back from a hospital visit to find a message on the answer phone from a funeral director or an email from a school, or the number of times you sit there, you work through all your emails, you literally take the dogs for a walk around the block, and then you get back and there's another 10, and you're like, what? I've just cleared all this. The tasks can sometimes seem never ending, and the demand can be overwhelming. And I think the smaller your children are, the more that actually is as well. The grandchildren counted. I've met a few grannies this week who said they'd be very happy to have them back over as much as they love them. You see it in lane industry too. Last week several people over the space of just a few days were at a PCC meeting, baking cakes, helping at the school cake sale, in church leading different aspects of worship, visiting and helping the elderly, planting trees, doing goodness knows what else. And here in Mark's Gospel is the first clinical description of ministry burnout. And we need to make sure that we recognise those symptoms in ourselves and we act early enough to prevent them. Because if we're not resting a bit, we can't help anybody else, we're doing nothing. 
I think these last 16 months, with all that we've been through, make it even more important than ever to be self-aware if we're becoming spiritually and physically exhausted. The Bible teacher William Barclay, commenting on this passage, says, the rhythm of the Christian life is the ultimate meeting we've got in the secret place and serving people in the marketplace. And the essence of the Christian life is this ebb and flow of moving into the presence of God in the busyness of life and then returning to involvement with people enriched by our spiritual renewal. When Jesus invited his disciples to go away with him to that deserted place, he wasn't inviting them to drop out. He made no suggestion at all that their ministry of witness and compassion was over. He was simply inviting them to pause in a proper manner before continuing to bless and to serve. It was an invitation to observe the proper rhythm of the Christian life. And they accepted that. They got into the boat and headed off for the first of all Christian retreats. So today, Jesus calls us to join him in a deserted place, a place where we can be alone, not forever, but just for a short while. And it depends on your life, doesn't it? It might be 10 minutes, it might be a day, it might be a holiday. I'm here next week, and I'm on my holidays. We've got the pleasure of the Archdeacon for a couple of weeks. Because I am answering that call to find a deserted place. If that's possible in England this summer, I'm not sure, but I'm going to try my best in Dorset. Um, but from time to time, we just need to go where there is no Wi-Fi or 4G or email or voicemail. A place where briefly there's no social media. So in that gospel, Jesus challenges us to recharge our batteries with him and him alone. Calls us to rest a while, or will be of no use to anyone, especially to God. So I do urge you to embrace that spiritual practice of rest and renewal. And like I said, that might be a couple of weeks' holiday. It might be popping into Morley Abbey to join them in prayer as an open invite for people to join them and pray several times a day. It might be 20 minutes on the Monday and evening prayer. Wednesday midday prayers, or it might just be five minutes sat in the garden admiring God's creation. Rest and relaxation aren't just God given gifts, they're God directed. We're told to rest on the seventh day, to keep the Sabbath holy. And He says, Come with me to a quiet place so that you can get some rest. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your goodness and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Lord, accept these gifts for the work of your church, in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Church Militant, here in prayer. 
pray for our parish, for those living in Elsley and Elkins, for our school as they've broken up in the summer holidays, that they may have rest and refreshment. For Mrs. Pym preparing for her new school, and Mrs. Lindley as she joins us as head. We pray for our diocese, for the parish of Morecambe St. Christopher there, for our links between the two committees of Brown Shrine and Blackburn, for the South African Archbishop Baba in the Free State, for the Nyanga Disciples of Prayer for the Adelaide Language Count in Rwanda, and for our diocesan vision, we pray for more vocations, for the priesthood and the religious life, especially for vocations amongst your adults. We pray for our world, a world which is troubled at the moment, for the ongoing COVID situation, particularly in countries like Indonesia, and for those with vaccine inequality. For the many places filled with conflict, for Israel, Iraq, disturbances in South Africa. We pray for those killed or injured in so many disasters, for the hospital blaze in Iraq, the floods in Germany and Belgium. We offer these to you, Lord, praying for a fairer, more peaceful world. Where the concerns of others are put first. <clears throat> we remember our friends in nursing homes, Lucy Bolton and Jean Douglas. We pray for all who are sick in body, mind, and spirit. For Margaret Blair, Isabel Brown, Neve Evans, Lauren Hall, Maureen Harrison, Jodie Hinton, Alison Holbrook. Elsie Holt, Lisa Johnson, Kerry Lowe, Spencer Pierce, Jack Turner, and Norman Wilkinson. We pray for the family and friends of Joan Bentham, who died recently. And remember today the anniversaries of Clifford Hancock and Elise Hope Pitt. In a moment of quiet, we bring our own concerns and thanksgivings to you. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee, most merciful, to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and truth, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity with godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and mighty word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace and to follow their good example, that with 
them that may be partake into thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near you with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, make me kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Amen. Father, and Lord Jesus Christ, Christ maker of all heaven, judge of all men, we acknowledge the word of our hearts and sins in the by thy works, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. We remember us of them as grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the last of the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honour and the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all men that with heart and repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received. For Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet to have us so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. We do not presume to come into this thy table, thus of the Lord, trust in our own righteousness, trust in our own holy we are not worthy of the subject of the devil of the promise of thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his blood. Remembrance of his death and passion may be 
partake into his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same line that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who taketh away the sins of the world. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Mm Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, within earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. 